What's up everybody? This is Tim, AKA Makery Guy from Wego Street Makery. Uh, I'm here in my office and I just wanted to say hello again. I haven't done a true, with my big camera, vlog type uh, post in a long time, or a video for my YouTube channel. So I'm gonna do it today. I've got a customer who's picking up a piece tomorrow. It is an old dresser that is, it's gotta be 200 years old. The joinery is beautiful. Uh, and I've done all of the structural repairs that I need to to the piece and the last piece that I do is the polish and I wanted to kind of walk you through the steps of that and it'll blow your mind how clean I can get an old piece of furniture and at the same time it's probably gonna blow your mind how dirty your furniture at home probably is so I'll apologize for that ahead of time uh, but if you really truly want to bring back the shine and rejuvenate some pieces of furniture in your home I'll walk you through the steps of that. Here we go. Little flop eared mule. So this is the piece. Uh, obviously the drawers are not in it right now and you can see these white strips which are not original. Uh, they're melamine edge banding that I've been able to, after I did all of the structural uh, loose glue joints and the runners were all loose because they were hand nailed. They were hand nailed with long nails and then bent over because they didn't have the correct length of nails to nail into the side which is only three quarter thick. Um, so I, I drilled, countersunk, and screwed these into place with the appropriate size fasteners and got them all level and, and where it needed to be. The back needed some extra nailing on it and I'll show you with the drawers. A couple of the drawers needed some uh, new pieces added on to the drawer bottoms and those needed to be secured differently. But these melamine strips are on the runners and also on the bottom sides of the drawers where they slide and it makes a super slick uh, surface for the drawers to slide on in older drawers like this, older pieces. But uh, to back to the subject, the finish. It's amazing. I mean, when we clean our houses, we get out the pledge. We get out the pledge and we get the dust off. Every time we do that, we add a layer of wax. And depending on the different kinds of, you know, if you use pledge or end dust or, or um, whatever you may use for a furniture polish, there's years and years and layers and layers and years of, of finish built up on that. And in order to properly polish a piece of furniture, we need to get that off. So anything waxy, oily that may have been put on it. And what I use is just a mild solution of Dawn dish soap and uh, a scrubby that's not really like something you would wash your dishes with that's not super abrasive but enough to cut through that oil and grease. And we're gonna get all of that off of the furniture first, and that's the first step. And then I'll show you the water that comes out of the bowl. It's amazing. Uh, so, the items we're gonna use for cleaning up are this just a small bowl, uh, dish soap solution. I think I did like four drops of dish soap in this, and we're using this two-sided. It's not very abrasive. It's a blue scrubby, I'm not exactly sure where I got it from. Um, the gloves I'm gonna use when we get to using the Minwax paste wax. That's what we're gonna put on it to um, rejuvenate the shine after we take off all the other stuff. And a couple rags, that's it. And you'll be amazed at how dirty this rag becomes at the end of that part. And uh, let me grab a drawer here. Just put the drawer face right here and I'll just show you the process really quick. It's going to be the same with everything else. Wring it out all the way. We don't want we don't want uh, wood to or the wood to actually get wet um, like where it's going to soak it in but mild pressure covering everywhere that if you think like this drawer was closed it would have been wiped with pledge or some other kind of furniture polish. Uh, I gotta run and grab something really quick. The other, I always forget, uh, the other thing I, I always use is my toothbrush 
and for areas that are uh, little cracks and crevices and places where you wouldn't normally get with your rag, we're going to scrub around those with the same solution behind the knobs, just like that, and the face of it. The face of it will hit with this a little bit too. Dunk it in a little more. And scrub this. One thing to look for when you're doing this, you will see, just like when you wax your car, uh, if you drop water on, on your waxed car, you'll see droplets of water where it beads up. If you see that your scrubbing solution is beading up, that means there's still wax or something there. So you scrub the entirety of the surface and then take your rag and make sure you remove all of the moisture, even in these little cracks. <laughs> and completely dry the surface. Flipping the rag after you've wiped it. All right, getting all around the knob. I could take the knobs off, I tightened them, and uh, they're not being refinished or anything, but just look. Look at the dirt. Just from that one little drawer front, you know? So, and then you look at the shine, and the shine is still there, but it's a little flatter than it was. A little flatter than it was because you've removed, you've removed the inconsistencies, right? Everywhere it's been wiped before, and there's a good shot of the shine. So you've already brought some shine. This is dry. This is absolutely dry. Let me grab the other small drawer just to show you as a comparison. It also has a shine, but you'll notice some inconsistencies in the shine where maybe pledge or end dust was put on it or this drawer was used more, so it got worn more. Um, so there's the shine on this one, okay? That's the one we haven't cleaned. Here's the one that we have cleaned. You can see how it's way shinier. We're getting back down to the old lacquer or whatever the finish was that was originally put on this without damaging it. We've just removed all of the wax and buildup from over the years. So that's the first step. Just go through and scrub the rest of these and I'll keep showing you this rag as we go. <laughs> One thing I'm, I haven't scrubbed this one yet. One thing I want to show you is what to look for when you're doing this yourself. And it's that beating up that I was telling you about. So I'll wipe this gently with water. And you'll see that the water, let me just wipe this one area. The water doesn't, let me get back here so I can really zoom in. You'll notice that there's areas that are not wet because they beat up like a waxed car. Let me see if I can, can do it on a longer run. It might show better. Okay, I've zoomed in on this one spot that should show the shine. And I'm gonna wipe it with water. And you'll notice, I'm seeing it 
and the other light. If I have to move the camera, I'll move it. You see how it's beating up? Especially like right in this area here. Um, that means that it's not cutting the grease. So you've got little beads. So that means the wax is still there. So once I scrub it, and you'll feel, as you're scrubbing this, you'll feel it to begin to dig in. And what I mean is not into the finish, but you'll feel like the smoothness that was there is starting to go away and that you're actually removing something. Now, let me wipe that clean. And you shouldn't see just a regular shine. There's just a regular shine. And now, if I go back over it with water, the whole entire surface that you wet just looks wet. It doesn't look like it's beating up anymore. And that's what you want. You want that entire surface, once it's clean, and you should see some small suds there. Once that's clean and it's wiped and it's wet, you get a consistent shine. You're not getting that beady shine. Let me wipe that now. And that's what you're trying to achieve. Then you know all of the wax has been removed from before. So now all of the drawer faces have been scrubbed and you can tell that they look more dull. Now this job wasn't a refinish where we were stripping down to bare wood and fixing any defects or anything like that. The character, the old holes that are filled and the overall condition and dents and things like that in the drawer faces were to be retained because we want this uh, to be left original. But what I, what I want to show you is here is a clean rag that we started with very clean rag here is the rag that we used to wipe those off after and not to gross you out but that's not just dirt it's the old wax and it's everything that's been built up over the years what's good is we're not putting another layer on top of all of that these are clean now and what we put on top is actually going to be a really durable uh, furniture wax that is made for that purpose um, and it doesn't necessarily need to have pledge put on it it just needs to be buffed and perhaps once or twice a year re-waxed so um, it's a protective finish that builds up a little heavier than a normal uh, aerosol type finish would do so now we're on to the what we call the carcass of the dresser and that's going to be the top surfaces and the sides of the dresser one of the reasons we're retaining the original finish of this is the craftsmanship that you can see. This is a hand scraped top, right? I mean, people try to reproduce that nowadays and this is legitimately an old piece that looks just that beautiful already. The only thing we need to do is remove that old wax. So let's do that on this piece. So I've moved the piece of furniture up onto a, it's a spool with wheels, I call it a cart, and um, I just wanted to go through a little bit of what I had to do to repair. This crack right here um, was quite substantial and was separated. This foot was absolutely not attached. It came with the dresser, but it wasn't attached. Um, and I had to make new pieces for it to attach to and um, reattach it to the carcass. But the other thing that was interesting was 
if I don't know if I can get a shot of it or not, but this piece this piece here is actually dovetailed up into this. And then these pieces, uh, the dividers for the drawers, are actually dovetailed into the face of this side. And this side is all solid wood. And I just happened to notice this shot right here that you can, you can get that consistent shine that we've gotten from actually cleaning all the wax off. But also that hand scraped, it was hand planed. Hand planed flat, which is not perfectly flat. If you look down that side, you can see the ridges in it, and that's just from someone with a hand plane going over it. Um, it's the character that you don't get from Ikea, unless it's stamped into it. So right there, again, is a uh, this piece is dovetailed into that. So just a beautiful piece. Um, so it's, it's, it's just so satisfying to get it structurally sound again, back together, and um, to carry on in another hundred years. So what we're going to do now that I have it up here, I got it up here to scrub the feet. We're going to scrub the feet. Here's one here and one over there. So we're going to scrub the feet and uh, we're going to do that with a toothbrush to get in all the little nooks and crannies in here where wax is built up and uh, dust has lived for years. So we're going to, this is where some real dirt's going to come off. Sorry, I had the scanner on. There was actually a police chase going on. And, uh, not too far from here, actually. <laughs> I had the old scanner on. So, the little moldings and profiles uh, that the more moldings and profiles that a piece of furniture has, the more places dust can gravitate. And the more places that rags won't conform to when you're dusting. And that leads to more places where the dirt and dust can get stuck. And polish can actually build up if you don't buff it back off. So. You can see right there that a lot of that was still stuck in there. That one's clean. I'll wash the other foot. And then we'll get on to the polish. Okay, I've got my paste wax out here. And I'm just dipping my rag into it. <clears throat> and I'm going in a circular motion. And this wax is kind of stiff and it's going on. Uh, you can feel it grabbing onto the surface, not skimming off of the surface because we've cleaned it. <laughs> and uh shut that off. <clears throat> so it's building up its its protection. And putting it on the knob and the backing and everything. And then we're going to let that sit and glaze over. And I think, hopefully, if I can show you this, yeah, there is no shine really. Now, it's completely flat because, well, there's a little. So, <clears throat> you may be able to see. swirl marks. I can see that. I'll, I'll, I'll do another shot uh, in a minute of all the drawers that are waiting for that to flash over. But that's pretty much it. You put some on the clean rag, you rub it on, you let it sit. So that's that step. Wanted to give you a good shot of <clears throat> exactly what the glare looks like. You're getting a good 
a good down light onto this so you'll see the shine change as I rub this wax on. It was completely flat. Even the knobs and the backings for the knobs. That's really it. You don't overdo it, you just rub it in on top of the finish. It's nice to know that you've scrubbed away all of the old finish so that what you're applying on top is what you're dealing with. You're not mixing different finishes, you don't have this wax going on top of another wax and trying to figure out why it's blotchy in one spot or, or not another. Right now, of course, it doesn't look like a very even finish because I'm doing swirl marks. And that's just making sure it's rubbing into all of the little dents and cracks and crevices of the distressed finish that it has just from being such a genuinely old piece. So, that is that. We'll let that flash over with the other pieces. Make sure I've got it all covered. I do. Let that sit. <coughs> Do the rest. Well, it's absolutely the opposite of what we did earlier. Um, instead of scrubbing off wax, we're we're putting it on. And if you do, if you put it on too light, you can still see shiny spots. So you know that that's where you haven't rubbed the wax in enough. <clears throat> and uh, you'll feel a point when the wax that you're rubbing on is is totally covering the piece. So. We'll let that we'll let that sit until I do the carcass. So I'm going to do the carcass now. Then I'll come back and buff these. Then I'll go back and buff that, and then we can put the drawers in, and it'll be finished. All right, on the top of this drawer, you can see the swirl marks that I made applying the furniture wax. And you'll see as I go just how beautiful of a finish is revealed. Even on the old hardware. Gotta make sure we get in all the crevices and cracks around that. But you can see as the wax comes off, it just reveals that beautiful shine. So some of that wax has remained. And we're buffing, look at this knob. Huh. We're buffing uh, this wax to a finish. Because we took the old finishes off, that allows this wax to adhere to the original finish and have the surface of that wax buffed. And actually, this is just an initial buff. What happens is you'll, you'll buff this off and you'll get the wax that'll build up on your cloth and it'll actually begin to reapply it because as you rub it kind of builds up heat and uh, melts the wax again. So this will glaze over one more time and I'll have to uh, rub it down again but I think you can you can seriously see the difference. Just watch the I'll do this under 
underneath part of this knob, but the top of this knob right here. And that's just so satisfying. It's so polished. So you notice a big difference there. After I put the drawers back in and I buff the carcass, um, I'll use one final clean cloth and uh, rub down the entire, entire thing. Two more drawers to go. the shine of this piece this is the last cloth and I will take that and simply rub lightly with the grain just feathering out any sort of film that might be left getting right around these knobs one more time Again, buffing, but making sure that your your final strokes of on it are with the grain. This middle part with the grain on that side part, all the way around. Absolutely gorgeous. When the client first brought this in, one of the drawers uh, couldn't really even be inserted because the bottom had fallen out of it. And that was because the wood had shrunk so much over the years that it actually pulled the drawer apart. And so it really rendered itself useless. Uh, the bottom would fall out, and of course, if you ever had the bottom fall out of a drawer, you know that that's just not functional. And being that this was a family piece of the clients, they wanted it taken care of, and they wanted the regular patina and shine saved but highlighted, and a general sense of just care given to this piece so that it was functional. And brought back to, brought back to its glory, not the day that it was new, but certainly a day that brought it back to life. Uh, so now the drawers, if you've ever had an old dresser like this, the squeaks and the creaks and the uh, it's it's pretty pretty awful and a lot of times with these dressers over time on a house that has uneven floors or something like that the dresser will just rest and it will become like it'll mold to however crooked the place is and then your drawers won't slide and you force them and that eventually works your drawers loose so uh, it's always good to make sure that your feet are level even if the house isn't to keep the cabinet square and care for the drawers. Now with the with the slides that I've installed and the drawer structures, these slide like like effortlessly. And they'll be be able to be used for years and years to come. So that is one 200 year old dresser that is about as pretty as it can get and it's cared for. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, there will be more coming. I never know what's going to come through the door. Actually, this client that's picking this up tomorrow is also dropping another piece off, and I'm excited to see what that is. Um, <clears throat> I've also been working on a couple upholstery projects upstairs. Those are getting delivered tomorrow, 
I didn't get a chance to film those, but I hope to do more of that in the future. Um, thank you for watching. Listen, if you haven't yet, there's a little bell picture uh, on the on the video, and you can subscribe. And if you're a subscriber, and then and then you click the bell to uh, receive notifications whenever I do a video, it'll pop up in your feed. And uh, I promise it'll always be something good and uplifting and skill building, and it's uh, it won't be garbage. So it doesn't hurt to subscribe, and I hope that you do that. So. Thanks for watching, and next time we'll have another project for you. Oh yeah, one last thing. That dirty water going down the drain. I'm going to pour it slowly so you can see. pretty gross. So think about cleaning off your furniture at home, huh? Alright. We'll finish this off with a little something here, a little kind of some kind of tool. Go ahead. Okay. Let's see, uh, I'm going to ask him on PG. Okay.